How's it going, people? Tactar Ted. It is Saturday, the 7th of January, 2023. Happy Orthodox Christmas. Yes, it is Christmas in the Eastern Orthodox religion, the Russian Orthodox religion. Um, in case you guys aren't aware of that, Christmas, the Orthodox, uh, celebrated approximately 14 days later. There's been a two-week variance in um, calendars, and the West tends to use one calendar. Um, the Orthodox have kept their old calendar, and there's a two-week variance. This has caused problems throughout history. It's something you can look up. You look up the Gregorian calendar and figure out how that contrast with other calendars out there. Uh, I don't have time to go into all that. But what I will go into is uh, the ceasefire. Does anybody know about the ceasefire? Putin, at the behest of the Metropolitan of the Russian Orthodox Church, Metropolitan Kirill, uh, offered up a ceasefire. The Metropolitan said, hey, you know, let's, let's try to give all of our uh, people the day off from the war so they can take care of their religious duties. Um, Orthodox Christmas is a lot more religious and a lot less commercial. A, a lot of the nonsense that we deal with at Christmas um, is actually pushed off to New Year's. And as soon as Putin came out with all this, the Ukrainians automatically started crying foul. Yes, the Ukrainians, oh, this is just propaganda. You know, Putin didn't offer a ceasefire on the 25th of December. We have a lot of different religions, including Catholics. Putin didn't do this, so therefore it's not legitimate. Putin didn't offer a ceasefire during New Year's, which is the largest secular holiday in uh, the former Soviet republics, in the former Soviet states, whatever you want to say it. Um, he didn't do any of that, therefore this is illegitimate. Well, there's a little problem with this. Number one, Ukraine didn't offer, offer up a ceasefire or ask for a ceasefire on the 25th of December, nor did they ask for a ceasefire on New Year's. And they have been persecuting the Orthodox. I believe this goes in with a lot of their persecution. They just ain't real keen on religion. And Zelensky, you know, he claims to have a religious whatever attached to him. I think that's more of a um, ethnicity that's attached to him than it is a religious or a faith. Um, and um, they've considered they've continued their persecution all the way through of the Orthodox inside their country, the Ukrainian Orthodox. Um, and you know, it's just it's it's a terrible shit show. Uh, honestly, I expected uh, the Ukrainians could have went two ways with this, and they still may. We'll see tomorrow night uh, when uh, the ceasefire is over. The Ukrainians could have said, hey, look, 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 Putin can't even keep his own word about a ceasefire. The Russians attack this and attack that. And I've seen reports of that uh, already because the uh, ceasefire went into effect noon Moscow time on the 6th. So we're, you know, a good 12 hours in into the supposed ceasefire. Um, or the Ukrainians could have said, yeah, we'll do your ceasefire, then make gains uh, on the Russians kick back and doing their solemn duty on Christmas. But um, we'll see more about how that transpires. Now, why am I really wanting to make this video? Well, I want to talk about where we were one year ago. One year ago, one year we're talking the 7th of January. The war in Ukraine has not yet started, or at least Russia's involvement in the ground war in Ukraine has not started. That's still a month and uh, 15 days away. So, a month and a half before the war. Was there anything going on? Was there anything going on in the news? Does anyone remember? Well, absolutely there was something going on. Um, in Kazakhstan, yes, Kazakhstan, uh, home of the mythical, mythical character Borat. Um, if you've seen that movie, uh, the second one wasn't nearly as good. Um, a country that I have been to, that I have worked and lived in. Um, there were riots. 
there was a real insurrection going on in Kazakhstan. And what was this insurrection, riots, and unrest caused by? Well, real simple, folks. It was caused over natural gas. You know, the same natural gas that we were dealing with, with the Nord Stream blow up, with, you know, Russia's got its hand on the gas tap of Europe, and all this happiness going on currently with this war. Well, it's interesting that a month and a half before the ground war in Ukraine started, or the Russian troops invaded Ukraine, um, there was a massive amount of unrest in Kazakhstan. Now, how did the situation in Kazakhstan come to be? Well, it came to be real simple. It's a byproduct of, of socialism inside of a country. Basically, Kazakhstan, uh, gas being sold inside Kazakhstan is um, regulated. The, the price is actually being sold at a loss. And it's okay because Kazakhstan rationalizes that by the fact that they produce and ship abroad a lot of natural gas. A lot of natural gas. And if they're making good money in the European markets and other markets, they can afford to sell to their people at home at a loss, a small loss. Um, unfortunately, the Kazakh government saw a chance to make a lot of money. And it wasn't that they were going to raise the prices on their people to make money. They rose, allowed, removed the price restraints so that people would actually conserve or use less natural gas inside Kazakhstan. What they wanted to do was they wanted to free up more gas so they could sell more gas to Western Europe that was going through the pre-invasion glut of getting as much uh, natural gas brought into Europe as they could. The Kazakhs saw this as an opportunity to make money. They figured, well, we raised the price the folks will immediately not want to use as much. They'll lower temperatures in their homes. They'll, they'll do this. They'll do that. They'll conserve because they won't want to spend the money. What they didn't count on was the riots, uh, the insurrection that occurred all across Kazakhstan. Uh, people just weren't going to put up with it. Now, there are some things that bother me about how this all came about. Uh, it was portrayed in the Western media, which didn't really cover it much, that this was spontaneous, spontaneous outbreak of violence in Kazakhstan in, in response to uh, the uh, subsidies going away of natural gas. And let's be honest, folks, spontaneous doesn't happen simultaneously in the four largest cities in the country. That's not spontaneous. When everything broke out, it broke out in Almaty, Astana, uh, the larger cities inside Kazakhstan, violence broke out. Now, how bad is it? Well, the capital city, the rioters actually chased the police out of the city. Yes, they chased them out of the city. Um, you know, luckily with Facebook memories, I've been able to go back and see what all I had at the time. And there are a lot of videos out there. Uh, police were actually beheaded by the uh, rioters. Um, you know, it's interesting here in this country, we talk about January 6th being an insurrection. I don't believe any of the Capitol Police were beheaded. In fact, none of the Capitol Police were killed. Now, they may have had heart attacks because they were terribly out of shape, or they may have had heart attacks or strokes because they watched one of their own murder a civilian, an unarmed woman, a veteran. Um, but there were no murders of federal police officers on January 6th. During the Kazakhstani riots, there were people murdered. There were police officers murdered. There were police officers beheaded. Um, and it was nasty. There were video out there. Um, and that was one of the deals where they don't like, uh, where YouTube didn't like showing the violence. Uh, it's amazing what we'll show violence about on the evening news and other places 
We don't want to acknowledge the violence. Now, in the midst of all this, um, Kazakhstan called in its uh, partners in one of its alliances to provide security for Kazakhstan to help restore order. One of the alliances they belong to happens to include Russia and Belarus, and Russian troops did go in and they helped restore order. Now, one of the more interesting little tidbits that happened, uh, Jin Psaki, um, who was the uh, shill for uh, the Biden administration at the time, came out during one of their press conferences without being asked, saying, oh, you know, there is a, there is a rumor out there that we had something to do with the riots in Kazakhstan. Now, nobody asked him this. And they felt that they had to somehow get out ahead of something. And that's kind of troubling. Um, they didn't want to wait to be asked about it. They wanted to put it out there ahead of time. And, of course, there's a lot of rumors that, yes, indeed, we supposedly had something to do with that. I, I won't get into all that. But it's amazing that natural gas was an issue in the region before the war in Ukraine expanded, before the Russians got involved and crossed those borders. And it's interesting to me that we have this continuity that somehow gas energy is a big deal. And it seems that somebody is trying to monopolize energy, definitely monopolize energy. You know, I've said for years, um, what Russia lacked is a military superpower post-Soviet. They've started to regain as an energy superpower. They monopolize a lot of energy and they sell it and make a lot of money on it. And it's incredible that I, I believe a lot of the reason we're having this situation in Ukraine is because the West couldn't stand the fact that Russia had that much sway in the world. They didn't, they had too much power and plus, they were using it to subsidize and rebuild a military. And a lot of the systems, you know, I, I can remember the old days how we used to talk about Soviet uh, vehicles and Soviet weapon systems as junk. The Russians are producing quality stuff. They're, call, they're producing stuff that's holding its own in Ukraine. The amazing thing is a lot of these wonder weapons like... Um, AT4s and javelins and this sort of thing that we always talked about are top of the line really aren't having the effect that we thought they would. Now, part of this is because you can't take a uh, decent piece of equipment and just hand it to a conscript that's had four rounds out of his AK fired and throw him into the front line and say, here, go, go defend Ukraine against uh, the orc invaders and expect any sort of results. Um, the sad part is NATO has put a lot of time and effort um, during their bullshit of the Minsk Accords, during the, the, the basic fraud that's been admitted by uh, French officials and German officials about how the Minsk agreements were a fraud committed against Russia that was not um, negotiated in good faith. They actually took and put a ton of money and a ton of training into the Ukrainian army. And they still could not get them competently trained on those systems. And after the Russians went through that army, that standing army, and pretty much had decimated it, then you start throwing in all these conscripts, you know, emptying the prisons. Um, old men and little boys, throwing them into the front. And it hasn't worked out so well. But when you get right down to it, there's something bigger going on here, folks. Um, energy, 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 energy. Energy in Kazakhstan was a problem. Energy coming out of Russia through Europe is a problem. It's, it's amazing to me how if you look a little tighter and a little closer to a lot of these things, it's multifaceted. There are multi-layers to what's going on. And 
the news media in this country is really happy to allow us to forget a lot. They're allow, you know, uh, words of Poroshenko that got reported elsewhere, didn't get reported here. And they're just happy that you don't know them. And if you know them, they're going to try to spin it that, oh, that's what he said, but he, what he really meant was A, B, and C. Because you're not smart enough to understand translations that are written out in written English. Um, the same with a lot of stuff that's showing up with Zelensky. Zelensky ready to go to war immediately on, uh, as soon as he got into office. This is all stuff that he, you know, you don't see, you don't understand. And they're happy for you not to see it. They're happy for you not to understand it. So, I want you guys to think a little bit. Um, Kazakhstan had a real insurrection, real violence. We didn't have it, but we beat the drum about it. We're not worried about the uh, insurrection and violence. Uh, I think somebody had an outside hand in it. Like I said, you don't simply have four cities explode at once without a little backing, without a little uh, bit of instigation somewhere. Also, one of the other neat things about it was Kazakhstan's not a top-line country. Um, and it's not, I like the Kazakh people. Kazakh people are laid back. I, you know, I've always had good interactions with the Kazakhs. Uh, but as far as technology, they're not exactly on top of everything. That's one reason they rent the Cosmodrome back to the Russians because they just don't have the infrastructure to be able to, to do anything with bike and war. Um, this country was able to shut down the internet. They totally clamped down on all communications. Uh, you weren't getting on the internet and watching me rant on YouTube. You weren't doing anything if you were in Kazakhstan that week. Now, for you crypto fanatics... I've warned you, and I'll warn you again. Crypto is only good as long as you can access the internet. Well, it doesn't matter. I'll use Tor. Okay. You use Tor, but how? They've shut the internet down in your country. You can't connect. Internet is not functioning. So you may have millions, billions, whatever, in crypto. But if you can't get to it, what good is it going to do you? Honestly, what good is it going to do you? one of those things I'd kind of like to know. You, you guys seem to know it all about a lot. Um, that was another problem, too. Um, Kazakhstan, in case you guys don't understand, a lot of the uh, Bitcoin miners, uh, they came out of China when China started clamp down, moved to Kazakhstan because it was cheap energy. And those folks mined Bitcoin in a big way. And there was a lot of fear with those people about losing their ass and everything else when Kazakhstan clamped down on the internet. So just all sorts of interesting things to think about. But anyhow, folks, that's just where we're at. Um, you might want to dwell a little bit on what's happened in the past. You might want to think about it a little bit. You also might want to think about why I have a beard and look like a really, really old, evil, demented grandpa. Probably because I am an old, evil, demented grandpa. But anyhow, that's what I got for you folks. Once again, congratulations on Christmas to those in the Orthodox faith. Uh, congratulations to everybody else on making it into 2023 without succumbing to the Rona and all the other terrible maladies that are out there in the world. So anyhow, folks, that's what I got for you today. Y'all take care. Bye.